Hello everybody and welcome back to the Dovetail Box series. In this video, we're going to get started on the plinth. Let's get going. Right, so the plinth is another difficult one to kind of teach because there are so many different ways to get it done. If you've got a router table, lucky you, this is going to be a lot easier. However, as always, we're going to do it by hand in this video and I'm going to talk you through each step as to how I would go about doing it. But please note, there are many other ways to get this done as well. And if you have any better suggestions, chuck it in the comments below. So I'll quickly draw a side view of the box. So there's the side, there's the base that we screwed onto the bottom with that lovely plywood edge that a lot of you have been asking about. Now, the plinth comes out like that, little chamfer, down and then wraps underneath the bottom of the box, thus hiding that plywood edge. A lot of you are asking about why we've gone through all this effort to make a lovely dovetail box and then just screwed a base onto it. It's because the plinth hides it and it finishes off the bottom of the box quite nicely. Now, let's get rid of that because that sort of covers that question that many of you were asking. So, so if I draw a big version of the plinth, something like that, proportions are a little bit off, but you get the idea. If you've got a router table, very easy. Rebate cutter to get rid of that area, chamfer cutter to get rid of that area, and then pretty much just move on from this video into the next one where we'll be cutting it to size, mitering the edges, and then later on fitting it to the box. The only issue that you'll have with creating this profile before gluing it up is that when it comes to clamping this onto the base of the box, which is gonna be here, then you've only got this surface to actually push the clamps against, which is about eight millimeters tall. So it's not a lot of gluing surface, but it's still enough to get the job done. However, for those of you doing this by hand, which is the method we're gonna be doing in this video, we're gonna go about it slightly different. Really shouldn't be wiping off this chalk with a black jumper, should I? What we're gonna do is create just the rebate on the plinth. And we'll do that using exactly the same methods as we did on the lid of the box, either getting rid of that with a shoulder plane, getting rid of it with a router plane, whatever works to be honest. And then once we've done that, that entire assembly is gonna be stuck to the side of the box, which gives us a slightly larger gluing surface to push against the side of the box. And then once it's stuck, that's where we'll chamfer this down by hand. Does mean you've got to be a little bit careful about planing this edge and potentially catching the side of the box, but it's a lot easier planing a chamfer on this once it's fixed and making it meet up perfectly on the corners as opposed to doing it on an entire length by hand and then try and get that fitted to the outside of the box. It also means that it gives us that larger gluing surface, which you wouldn't get from a router table if you were to machine both the rebate and the chamfer all in one. Of course, you could kind of go for a mix between the two methods and do the rebate on the router table and just get that done consistently and quickly and then carry on as we would with the hand tool method where you just stick it on as one big block and then finish this off by hand. So machine there, hand here, and then you sort of get the best of both. But if you've got a chamfer cutter and a router table, it might just be easier just to do that straight away. It's completely up to you. At the end of the day, whatever method you go for, whether it's cutting the chamfer before sticking it on or if it's cutting it after it's stuck on, it doesn't change too much. You won't face any major issues either way. It's just some are slightly easier than others. So to begin with, we're gonna start marking out the rebate using a marking gauge. And I've cut it into two lengths like this, but you could cut this again if you wanna make it a bit more manageable. Completely up to you. I reckon that's about as long as I want to go while cutting this rebate. Firstly, I'll set the marking gauge to the depth of the rebate. And I'm just gonna pick which side of this looks nicer i.e. less defects on it and we want to be the outside edge. Something unsightly going up here. So this will be the front edge, little defect up here, but I'm pretty sure that will be cut out once I get this down to length. So get the depth marked nice and consistently all the way along. And on the other one, So that's the depth sorted. And then I just need to reset this to mark out how far in it needs to go. And then just to make sure I cut the correct part of this material out, I'm obviously gonna mark which area needs to be removed. 
So I'm probably going to cut this rebate using the rebate plane. However, I will quickly show you how to do it with the shoulder plane as well. If you're doing it with a shoulder plane, pop the plinth on the workbench and then get another piece of material that's the same thickness mounted just behind it. Bit of plywood on top, get a nice sort of flat edge to work with, obviously. And then clamp that down so it lines up with the marking gauge line that you've got on there. And then you need a little stop at the end which is also clamped to the bench so that when you're working on this rebate, this isn't slipping forwards and backwards. And then just load this up with clamps. If you can get some on the back edge, then happy days. But to be honest, any method that pushes that plywood down and keeps it locked against the marking gauge line that you've got scratched along here will be perfectly fine. And then the same as the lid, keep the shoulder plane pressed up against the edge of that material and keep planing down until you hit the line on the edge. The rebate plane is gonna be slightly different. I'm gonna get the material right up against the edge of the bench supporting plywood from behind it like that clamp that with my tail vise so the plywood doesn't move make sure the offset is exactly where i need it to be okay and then get my stop block clamped in place as well and there you go so plywood is locked down this is just sitting in there loose but that is then restricted by the backstop down here and even though the plywood is quite obviously sitting higher than the plinth on this side, as long as you've got nothing sticking out the side of the rebate plane, so for example, this bar is sticking out at the moment, but I can loosen a couple of screws on the back and pull that bar out a little bit further. In fact, let's push it like that, there you go. Now the entire side of this is nice and flat, and even though the plywood's sitting higher, nothing is restricting access. Okay, now we can begin rebating. So same as before, start at the very end of the cut, and then gradually bring it back until we get a full length shaving. And this will prevent the plane from tracking the grain as it would if we were to start the rebate all the way back from here on the first pass. So patience is key here. All right, so I have successfully cut the rebate using a rebate plane. Needs a little bit of cleanup. I could potentially get in there with a shoulder plane and just clean up that inside edge. If you don't have a shoulder plane and you've favored a rebate plane up until this point, wrap some 120 grit sandpaper around a hard block that is a perfect 90 degrees, and it's important that it's a hard block in order to do this and get that right up in the corner of that rebate and give it one or two passes. Again, don't start scrubbing away at it because you'll start rounding the corners. Just use it as a way to smooth out some of the marks left over by the blade, remove some of the burrs that have sort of been raised up to the surface. The sandpaper will gently remove that without causing it too much damage, providing you don't go too mental with it. So we've completed that bit. Now for the chamfer, as I said, we're going to do that once it's glued to the box because it means we've got a larger surface to clamp against and also it just makes alignment a little bit easier on the mitres. But I'm going to mark out the mitre now as opposed to doing it once the plinth has been fitted because once we've got the vertical wall up here, the marking gauge isn't going to be able to accurately scribe this line because uh, the scale's completely off here. But that wall isn't going to allow the marking gauge to go in far enough to scratch the line here. So if we scratch it before gluing it on, then it means that it's just ready to go. Now, when doing this, when you scratch a line with the marking gauge in from the front edge of the plinth, it's obviously going to create a sort of V cut like this. And this line is where you want the mitre to start. Similarly, when we come down from the top, it's gonna to create a mark like that. And then we're gonna chamfer away the material in order to join up those two lines. The reason I'm drawing this is because although we want to use a marking gauge to mark this out, just ensure that you don't make it too deep. Because if you really start cutting into it at this point, that area there is gonna become a gap and that area there is gonna become a gap. Well, not a gap, but it's gonna leave a mark behind that's gonna be difficult to remove. And you might have to make this mitre slightly larger 
than expected, which isn't the end of the world, but is also completely avoidable, providing you don't cut too deep with this. It's okay to cut deep with the marking gauge with regards to the rebate, because when that material was there, it created a V cut like this, and then you know, all that turns to waste anyway. So just have an idea as to which side of the mark that bevel is going to be and if it's going to cause issues later on. The mitre is a good example of this. So I'll set that marking gauge to four millimeters, which is the depth of the chamfer. And I'm gonna use this just to lock it in place while I mark it. Very lightly scribe that along the top edge so that it's not too deep, but still easily visible. And there you go, guys. That long contraption there is how you cut the profile for the plinth or is one of the methods of cutting the profile for the plinth. So as I said, in order to do this with a shoulder plane or a rebate plane, all you really need is a long straight piece of plywood or MDF or even wood, as long as it's got a long straight edge that you can reference off or use as a backstop for this piece to support it from behind, then this isn't too difficult of a job. And I would like to reiterate, if you have a router table, just get the rebate and the chamfer done now. It's gonna make clamping slightly more difficult, but it means you haven't got a fat around with shaping that chamfer on after it's glued onto the box. So you win some, you lose some, that kind of thing. So you're now ready to move on to the next lesson, which you can do so by clicking the link below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe by using the left hand button to the left hand side of, oh, sod it, left hand side of this video. <laughs> I will see you in the next one.